Let's do a derivative example. So we've done derivatives before where we were just doing derivatives of formulas and where we were also doing derivatives of formulas for the purpose of finding tangent lines or approximations. But dudes, now let's check out a nice little real world problem. So perhaps I sell murderous ninja kitties and I happen to charge some random price P, I don't know what it is, but whatever that price is, I can use that price to determine the quantity of ninja kitties that I sell. So P is the price and Q is the quantity. So that's how we're starting off. And the first question is, find the revenue as a function of price. So dudes, before you do anything else, the thing you should still remember about revenue is that, uh, 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 is that revenue equals price times quantity. And whenever you're asked to find a revenue function, you're always going to be keeping one of these guys the same. So you'll have a variable for price and you'll, you'll plug something in for quantity, or you'll have a variable for quantity and you're gonna plug something in for price. Now, I'm pretty sure all of the problems you guys have done thus far have been problems where you have a, a variable for quantity, maybe X, and you have a formula for price. And usually the price is something fixed, like $40. So you would keep quantity as X, you would change price to 40, and then you would do your math based on that. But that's not what it's always going to look like. And so in this problem here, you can see right away that the variable they give you is price. So that's the variable that we're working with. And right here, they give you a formula for quantity. So that go ahead and tells you that when you're working with this equation here, you're going to keep price as P, and you're going to use the formula they give you for quantity. So we're going to say revenue equals price times quantity. Price stays price. For quantity, we're going to use this formula that they hand us. Minus um, what? 10p. And then we can go ahead and distribute. So this is 800p minus 10p squared. And let's go ahead and make sure that works with what they're asking. They do say find the revenue as a function of price. So when they're specific about what it's a function of, that's just fancy language for saying the variable you have in your formula should be price and not you know quantity or some other random crap. So we can even write R of P. And that's pretty cool, dudes. That is our formula for revenue as a function of price. Good job, us. And 99% of that was accomplished by just remembering that revenue equals price times quantity. All right, now let's check out numero dos. Number two says, what is the instantaneous change of revenue with respect to price at the price of $10 per ninja cat? All right, well, first let's get rid of some of this annoying language. So all of this instantaneous change of revenue with respect to price crap, that is just fancy language for saying, find the derivative. Instantaneous is a big keyword for derivative and instantaneous change is an even bigger pair of keywords. And the fact that it says, of revenue with respect to price, well, that's just incorporating the fact that your Y values here are revenue and your X values are price. So no big deal, bunch of fancy language, but all it's really saying is find the derivative of, oops, not P, find the derivative of revenue. And so finding the derivative of revenue is easy enough. 800 P just becomes 800 minus 10 P squared. Well, the P squared becomes two P and we keep the minus 10. And if we simplify that, it's 800 minus 20p. So that's the derivative and that's cool, but that's not what they're asking. What they're asking is not what is the formula for instantaneous rate of change. They're actually asking us what happens at a particular point. What's the instantaneous change at the price of $10 per ninja cat? And all that means is you plug in $10 for p. So plugging in $10 for p, we get R prime of 10 is 800 minus 20 times 10, which is 800 minus 200. And that, my dear fellows, is 600. So whatever that means, uh, the rate of change of revenue with respect to price is $600 when the price that we charge is $10 per ninja cat. All right, now that might still seem like, okay, well, I guess I got the number, but what the crap does that mean? Dudes, we're gonna talk about what that means. Check it out. This is number three. Number three says, for which prices does it make sense for me to charge more? So this is a problem that is gonna be really easy to solve once we understand exactly what it's asking for. 
So it says, for which prices does it make sense for me to charge more? And in the context of me being an entrepreneur who makes and sells ninja cats, the idea is that I should try to maximize my revenue. So it makes more, it makes sense for me to charge more if I can increase my price and get more revenue as a result. So, um, by the way, dudes, just like as a quick aside, you know, increasing your price doesn't always help, right? So you might have something that is really cheap and you could increase your price and people would be willing to pay more for it and then you get more revenue and that's great. But if you have something that's already kind of overpriced, if you increase your price, yeah, when you sell it, you'll make more money, but so many more people will be driven away by that price hike that you're actually going to lose money in the long run. So price hikes are sometimes good, sometimes bad. And that's exactly what this question is asking. When is a price hike good? The answer is that a price hike is good if it will increase your revenue. So let's write this down. Price hike equals good if it increases revenue. All right, so that probably makes sense. And now let's even look at what we wrote down. What we wrote down is that we wanna increase revenue. Revenue is the function that we wrote down up here 800, uh, wait, where are we? It's the thing we were down up here. 800p minus 10p squared. And if we want that to increase, that means that the derivative should be positive. So increasing revenue is the same as the derivative being positive. So dudes, that's exactly what we want to solve for. We want to increase revenue, and that's the same thing as saying we want to find when the derivative is positive. So let's write down the derivative. We already calculated it before. R prime of P is equal to 800 minus 20 P. And we want to set that to be greater than zero and then solve. And solving inequalities is not so bad. You just gotta make sure that like you flip the inequality if you divide by a negative or some crap. But we're not even gonna do that here. Let's add 20 P on both sides. So we get 800 is greater than 20 P. And then let's divide by 20. 800 divided by 20 is 40. And so what we find out is that as long as our price is less than $40, if we even flip that, then maybe it looks more normal. As long as our price is less than $40, our revenue is locally increasing. And what it means that we're locally increasing is that if we charge a little bit more for our price, we will gain a little bit more for our revenue. If the price goes up, the revenue goes up. That's what it means to be increasing. So dudes, we have just used math to find out that as long as I'm on, as long as I'm charging less than $40, I should be charging a little bit more. And basically what this is saying is that I'm going to get my maximum possible revenue by charging exactly $40. And we'll be talking about that in the future. For now, adieu good people, adieu.